So not quite a bucket list item, but something I always thought would be fun to do is to drive across the Golden Gate Bridge, and I'm about five minutes away. I left on an uncharacteristically beautiful winter day in Vancouver. The skies were clear and it wasn't raining and gray like usual. My goal was to head for the Oregon coast and head down the coastline, thereby avoiding the Siskiyous in Northern California, which were at the time covered in snow and had a threat of more snow. I stayed overnight at Bullard's Beach State Park, which was maybe only 25% full, and found a lovely historic lighthouse within biking distance. Heading south down the coast, I was treated to more wonderful weather. Now keep in mind that I only have reservations at the national parks. Everything getting to the parks and in between is completely a game day decision. So the freecampsites.net website has been a valuable resource if you want to camp on the cheap like me. Simply click on the location of interest and then when the search returns some possibilities, just click on the sites to get a few details. They might work out for you. I also have Hip Camp, All Stays, and Harvest Hosts, but I haven't used them on this trip yet. Well, my first stay using free campsites.net was at the Bear River Casino, which had a large parking lot, and when you register at their casino, they give you $10 in free slot plays. So, wow, it's almost like getting paid to stay overnight with a chance of winning even more. Okay, I gotta say, I didn't win anything in the end, and I actually left some money there, but it was money I would have spent on a campsite anyway. So let's go on to the next day. Now you might be wondering if I stopped in Redwoods National Park on my way down the Northern California coast, and the answer is that I drove through and didn't stop, because I've been to the Redwoods many times. My next destination is another free casino further down the coast, and on the way there, I did treat myself to a drive through the Avenue of the Giants, which was beautiful. Highly recommend it. I also stopped and had a great short hike. Now, to get back to the coast, there was this one section that I will never care to drive again. And this section was connecting Highway 101 to the coast. I describe this length of highway as harrowing with hairpin turns, blind corners, and steep drop-offs. I felt like a slalom skier around these turns, and I bet, just like them, I'm paying zero attention to the pretty scenery because my hands are firmly gripping the wheel at all times. Now, when I finally got to the coast and could breathe again and look at the pretty water, I was so relieved. It was still winding at times, but not nearly as bad as the stretch I had just traversed. So after that harrowing day, I found myself at this lovely casino with a completely empty parking lot and a lovely restaurant. And what I really needed was a nice quiet night and some good food after that harrowing drive coming to the coast. And so I got to say, I did enjoy this free stay at the casino, though I didn't win any money again. Crossing the Golden Gate Bridge on such a beautiful day was a highlight of the California coast for me. I've always wanted to go across the Golden Gate Bridge. Not quite a bucket list item, but still something that would be really cool to do. So here we go. Oh my God, I'm driving across the Golden Gate Bridge. How fun is this? And there's some beautiful San Francisco in the distance. Oh, it's beautiful. What a beautiful city. Oh my gosh, I'm going across the Golden Gate Bridge. Wow, this is totally cool. Okay, got to pay attention. Now that I have crossed the Golden Gate Bridge and I feel about 3% more of an American, 
I made my way to Half Moon Bay, my destination that night, and I got the last open campsite at Francis Beach. I highly recommend this campground. It has access to a paved trail that takes you along several miles of beautiful coastline with amazing views. If you like mountain biking like I do, there's also some great trail riding along the bluffs. The sunset over the Pacific Ocean was simply amazing, and the skies continued to be crystal clear that night. It was almost a full moon, which gave me the opportunity to bust out the telescope after sunset. I'm enjoying a beautiful morning walk along Half Moon Bay on the Pacific Coast in California. This is the westernmost part of my journey. From here, I start heading east. I don't know if I'll make it to the Atlantic Ocean. We'll see, but I sure hope to. I'd love this to be a Pacific to Atlantic trip, as well as from the Mexican border to the Canadian border. That would be really cool. We'll see if we can make it happen. After leaving the coast, I headed for National Park Number 1, Joshua Tree National Park. Since I visited this national park before, my plan was to have just a day trip there. Thanks to Park Ranger Ian, he directed me to some BLM land north of the park and where I could stay the night. And as you know, BLM camping is free. I found a patch of land out there that I could call my own and enjoyed a quiet night, dark skies, and solitude. This is the busy time of year right now for these desert national parks, which are much too hot in the summer to visit. Right now, it's sunny and 75 degrees, which means more visitors. I'm pulling my trailer as I day trip through the park, so I knew that parking would be a challenge. Here I'm biking through a popular hiking spot called Barker's Dam to show you what the parking lot looks like on this Saturday during winter. There's no parking for vehicles, much less one towing an RV. So, when I visited national parks in the past in situations like this, my solution is to find a workable parking spot within a few miles of the planned hikes, and then I ride my bike to the trailhead. So I lock it up there, and I'm off on my hikes without having to deal with the parking headaches on popular hiking routes. On to Palm Springs for a week of relaxing at an RV park where I could finally hook up to water and electrical and not have to pull up stakes daily. It was a long week coming down the coast, so I did have a reservation at an RV park in the heart of Palm Springs, close into town. Unfortunately, when I got there at dusk, tired and hungry, the unexpected happened. The RV park was completely packed with narrow access streets and perpendicular small and narrow sites. This is what I saw when I showed up, which of course is not mentioned on their website. What the manager told me, as you can see in these very narrow access ways, is that you'd have to ask your neighbors across from your site to move their vehicles so that you could back in. However, when I tried to back in and get into my site, the neighbors were not there, so there was no way I could even get in there to access my site, which is right here, as you can see. I snapped a picture of it. As you can see from this picture, the site is not even wide enough to fit my R-Pod right next to the, my tow vehicle, my Tacoma. So my Tacoma would have to sit in the street just like everybody else's tow vehicle with very narrow access ways. To make things worse, the RV park told me they had no Wi-Fi even though it's advertised on their website. All of these things together meant I refused to stay here and I promptly left. Well, whew, good thing I didn't give them a deposit. So I'm going to end this week's episode right there. And in next week's episode, we'll talk about what happened and the benefits of staying calm and remaining flexible when the unexpected happens. Until then, keep camping, and we will see you soon. Mm -hmm.